with the world of tablet undoubtedly dying right now, is there still a place for one in our daily life? Especially an old one? Well, let's find out, shall we? In front of me, I have a Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 from the year 2013. Doesn't sound too old, does it? Since it's only 5 years old now. But does the performance go accordingly? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the physique, shall we? The body itself is fully plastic, just with different colors. Down the left side, there are two flaps, covering the separate SIM card slot and the microSD card slot. As for the right side, there's an IR blaster in the middle, along with the power and volume buttons. A feature which is somewhat useful for many things, but sadly is now gone from modern Samsung devices, and many devices in that matter. Oh, and also this device is very thin and lightweight, even for today's standard. But is it necessarily a good thing though? Let's see in the inside. First of all, the LCD display is not nearly bright enough to be used under direct sunlight. And CPU power, well, it's not a strong suit either. Its dual core 1.2 GHz Cortex A9 CPU is not even close to being the fastest CPU in the market. Not even back in 2013. The boot up time alone took me 34 seconds to complete. And once it's booted up, I don't expect to be able to use it right away. Especially if you forgot to turn off the Wi-Fi on the first place, before turning the device off. Why, you might ask? Take a look at how it lags in the menu once I got it connected to a Wi-Fi network here. And just the simplest of use, like browsing through the menu, turning on the Wi-Fi and updating all the notifications that got stacked overnight after you turn it off. It's gotten warm in this area right here. Opening apps. Yeah, that takes some time too. And the worst thing about this device, the orientation change. It takes forever. But there has to be some redeeming feature about this thing, right? Fortunately, yes. The camera is decent enough for when you really need one real bad. The shutter is okay to me and the lag is almost not noticeable. And depending on the condition, some of the pictures you would take might be half good. Although I wouldn't recommend using this thing as a camera. Especially for a close-up shot. And the next redeeming feature, the speaker. So in conclusion, what's a device like this good for then nowadays? The answer is simply for media consumption such as watching movies that you sideload into the SD card. Since app streaming is going to be either slow or mostly unsupported by apps nowadays. Or maybe at least watching YouTube, if you can handle the lag that is. Maybe listening to some music or reading books, that's pretty much it, I think. That's it for this video guys, this is Garrett Everything, thanks for watching, see you on the next one.